The Primus presents how Australia plans to regreen its outback desert and become a global produce exporter. Australia is the most deserted inhabitant area on Earth, with 70% of the area occupied by a desert. The country demographics tell that it is not a haven for agriculture. The unpredictable rainfall in central Australia is unique compared to other drylands. Instead of agricultural seasons, the transforming rhythms of arid Australia are characterized by erratic bursts of productivity that break up its protracted droughts. Even though the area's average rainfall is 200 millimeters, which indicates poor agricultural conditions in this environment, there are extended stretches of drought sporadically followed by heavy downpours, creating a boom-bust pattern. Australia is now setting its eyes on regreening the outback for developing agriculture. The country aims on captivating ever-growing Asian market. The population in Asian countries is increasing boundlessly, and there is an immense need for more food supplies. Australia is planning on making Outback arable to cash upon this opportunity to become one of the most important produce exporters in the world. As of today, Australia is not doing bad at all, as almost 70% of Australian agriculture production is being exported, and the country exports more agricultural products than its imports. Australian agricultural exports were worth nearly $49 billion in 2018 to 2019. Australia's top agriculture export destinations are China, Japan, the US, and the Republic of Korea. However, China continues to be Australia's leading agriculture product importer. Australians are smart, as they've been making infrastructural plans to enhance their agriculture since the 1930s. Now, they are turning one of their biggest disadvantages into an advantage, i.e. flooding. Parts of outback South Australia have been devastated by flooding but there may be a silver or uh, even a green lining. Vast sections of the typically arid outback have experienced record rainfall, bringing a new life to dormant vegetation and fauna. Often dry areas are now brimming with life, including unusual species this time of year. Ecologists anticipate that the effects will last for months and won't go as rapidly as they showed up. Australia planned to have a reservoir that could save all the floodwater inlands so that it can be used for irrigation. However, they already had one, but not in its best shape. The Great Artesian Basin is Australia's largest groundwater basin and one of the most significant underground water sources on the entire planet. In fact, for much of inland Australia, it is the sole trustworthy source of fresh water. More than 80 settlements in Queensland depend on the basin's precious water, which covers 1,203,920 square kilometers of land, or around 65% of its total area. The basin has been depleting for a long time, and it is a crucial source of water for the locals. The water flow is also accompanied by low pressure and flow rates. So to revive the whole system, a framework of dams was designed to bring water from the northeastern parts of the continent to the center. The plan sounds overwhelmingly ambitious, and science proved it certainly was. The plan was not feasible because there was an error in the calculation of evaporation rates. Scientists suggested that the evaporation levels would be intense and the sizes of reservoirs would not be big enough to induce rainfall. So the project cost was much more than its benefits. However, a small project of the same category proved viable when a demand for agricultural products in Asia increased immensely. So the policymakers decided to establish a network of tunnels that would irrigate the southern part of the continent. However, this project came at a cost of environmental hazards and disturbed the natural water flow. As a result, the government of Queensland had taken other steps to revive the basin. The first step was to ensure efficient channels for water usage, which involves managing water flow by rehabilitating or replacing bores, and replacing open bore drains with pipes, tanks, and troughs. Since 1989, the Queensland government has also invested $81 million in programs to cap pipe stock and domestic bores. The expected uptake of innovative agricultural technologies will lead to many changes in how farms are managed and allow agricultural yields to stabilize or increase without adverse environmental impacts and the conversion of additional non-agricultural lands. If these approaches are successful and can mitigate the negative consequences of climate change, this should also result in improved conservation of biodiversity. Australia, for the past couple of decades, has been thriving in agriculture. And to maintain this competitive advantage, the Australian agricultural industry must continue to think strategically, work collaboratively, and exhibit strong leadership that will drive it towards the vision of this roadmap to exceed 100 billion by 2030. Australia has actually already carved out its plan 
for 2030 for becoming a leading produce exporter. It is projected that Australia will see record sales this year in both agriculture and cattle sector. A record grain harvest was produced last year as a result of the improved seasonal circumstances, and a bumper harvest is anticipated this summer. With that guys, it's time to wrap up today's video. If you have any opinions, feel free to tell us in the comment section down below. If you like this video, consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.